Good morning folks, I'm Joe and you're watching Safari Joe's Adventures. I have a couple projects I want to do here in the future, but it's going to require me to build one little tool. And that tool is a hobo stove. Now hobo stoves aren't anything new. You can look at some old pictures from back during the depression and you can see them built out of metal paint cans, five gallon paint cans. You can see them built out of just about anything. But today a lot of people will build them out of coffee cans or a large bean can, something you'd find on the bottom shelf at your local Safeway store. The other thing about the hobo stove, it's very inexpensive to build. You're buying the can of coffee, you drink the coffee, now you've got a can. It's pretty easy to convert that can into a hobo stove, but that's what we're going to do. Another thing about the hobo stove, they're small enough that you can take them out and use them if you're taking a trip out to the woods. There are a lot of twig stoves that fold up that are stainless steel, titanium. You can buy those on Amazon or other places and, and they work very well. You know, some of those things are 40, 50, 100 dollars depending on uh, what kind of material they are. Yes, I realize this is just plain steel. If you use them on a daily basis, they'll probably burn out in about a year. But if you're just getting started, your kid and want to have a fire in the backyard and your parents will let you, or you're a young guy and you want to go out camping and you want to have something to contain a fire and you don't have a lot of money, this is something you can build, put in the back of your vehicle and take them out to the woods with you and you can keep a contained fire in them. So follow along with me and I'll show you how this is done. Now there are many different ways to build a hobo stove out of a can, but generally most of them will have some holes drilled in the top side, they'll have some drilled in the bottom side, and they'll have an area cut into the side of the can to feed twigs or wood, whatever they're feeding. You can also feed them in the top. Some of them you'll see them cut the bottom out. The problem with cutting the bottom out, if you wanted to use this hobo stove on a table or a wood bench, you're going to burn it. I'm going to leave the bottom in Put some legs on it. Now generally the tops will have a trivet. It's, that's a cross piece that you set your pan on. Or you could set a little grate on top of this. Either way. A trivet, it also gives you a little bit more height so you still have some air space and an area to drop pieces of twigs in whereas a grate would have to be removed if you wanted to drop twigs into the top of this. First thing you're going to want to do is remove the paper or plastic on the outside. So all you have is a can. Now you can get all technical, take a tape measure like this. It's got centimeters, it's got inches. You can put it around here and you can do all the math, spend the time doing that, having these equally spaced all the way around the can. I'm not gonna do that. I'm sure that uh, the people back in the 30s when they made these things did not do that. They probably just knocked some holes in just so it could have some air in it. I'm not going to knock the holes in because I want it to look a little nicer, but I am going to use a step bit to put my holes in it, and then I'll use a little cutoff wheel to cut out the door. Going to use this little indentation and that's where I will be putting air holes for the outside of the can. I've already got the four leg holes drilled. I can start and drill one beneath each one of these and then just split the difference a couple of times and I'll have enough holes in the bottom. Just go up here on the top in this top ridge and do the same thing just right above the hole I put there. And then in the middle cut out a piece probably an inch and a half by three and a half inches in here so you can feed twigs or wood in through the side. Okay, now that we have those in, we just come through here, split these in half. There you go. We got our holes along the bottom. Now we'll just transfer those straight up to the top here. done with this you can take a file the edges off of these things for any burrs. Okay I want to cut the feed hole in the side of this so I'm just going to put a couple pieces of tape here and I'm going to cut along either edge of this and we'll just go past these two holes here and about to here. 
I'm going to go ahead and install the legs. For the legs, I'm using 3 8 by inch and a half bolt and nut. I'm using a 9 16 ratchet and a 9 16 wrench. Once you have them tight, you can line these up, spillay them out just a little bit outward, but line them up with the one across from it. Just make sure they're level, kind of pull them out. I've had a couple of these angle braces so i'm going to use these for the trivet the piece that actually goes across that will hold your pans the pots when you're boiling water i'm going to drill a couple holes in these and fasten them and then cut them out so they slide down over the top of this can you can see i drilled both the holes straight through the middle of these now i'm going to connect them together you can see i've got the screws through this take my slotted screwdriver tighten it up that's where it's gonna sit. I'm gonna go ahead and notch this out so it will set in there without moving when the uh, pans are moved off of it. It's notched out on the top, locks in there so the pans or pots will sit there. I've just got one more piece to do. I'll be done with this. put those six sheet metal screws in. Those six sheet metal screws are going to hold this piece up so we have an air space underneath it for the ashes to fall in and the uh, air to get up and keep the fire going. So we got the insert in there, got the trivet on the top, and that's a complete hobo stove. The insert, it is raised above the bottom so the ashes have somewhere to go. Just a side note for y'all, anytime you use one of these, if you face this feeder opening that towards the breeze, will keep your fire hotter it will start faster now all I got to do is put some wood in it and give it a test this here is just some cedar bark makes good fire starter just processing it up to get it small enough to where it'll take a spark we could do it with a Bic lighter which I always carry but what's the fun in that and for insurance I got a little piece of pitch it's off of a ponderosa pine Start with the little stuff. The breeze is coming out of the northwest, so I turn the opening towards it. You can see the fire picking up. And there you go. That's how you build a hobo stove. Well, as long as this is working, you might as well use it. I'm gonna heat me up some water for a cup of constant common tea. It's been about five minutes. Sounds like it's starting to boil. There we go. Perfect. Good tea. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on the Hobo Stove build. If you do, give it a thumbs up, hit the like button, check out some of my other videos I have. If you like those, consider subscribing, hit the bell, and you will be updated every time I put a new video on. Thank you again for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. And God bless.